All right. Good evening. Um, thank you for joining us. It is the first week of summer, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic summer break so far. This is kind of a little bit more casual setting tonight. As you can see, I'm in my house. My dog is down here, so hopefully he behaves himself this evening. But we're really, really excited to begin working with you um, regarding the college application process. This webinar is being recorded, so should you want to go back and um, listen to it again, it will be uploaded to the Wyoming City Schools website, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, but we will send something out to you when it has, um, when it's been uploaded and ready for you to look at. So tonight, we are just going to give you a brief overview of the common application. I think, um, a lot of the stress regarding the college application process is really not knowing what to expect and um, you know all of the things that you need to do. And so tonight is just going to give you a little bit of an overview of the common application to alleviate some of those concerns about the unknown. If you have signed up for boot camp, um, we were going to go over the common application in detail. So you don't need to really start working on things this summer. That's what we're going to do at boot camp. But if you're feeling particularly anxious, there are some things that you can start working on now, which we will go over um, when we get into that site. It's important to know that the Common App kind of goes through a revamp over the summer and they typically do some updates. So if you start working on things now, your information will be saved, but it might look a little bit different when the common application goes live for the 22-23 application cycle. And that will happen on August 1st. So August 1st, 2022 is when the application, the college application for your, um, for your college application process will go live. Before we get into the common app, one of the things I really wanna mention is that when you start to apply to college, um, it's a little bit like trying to drink from a fire hose in terms of just information overload and having to keep track of all of the things. You know, you're obviously still a student, you still have sports, you still have theater, you still have band, you know, all of the things you, you presently do. And then we add the college application process in the mix. So it is really, really important that you figure out a system to stay on top of dates and deadlines and um, requirements. The colleges still communicate with students via email. I know that students don't communicate with each other via email, but that's how colleges are gonna, are gonna communicate with you. So it's really, really important that you have an email address that you are on top of, that doesn't have 10,000 emails you haven't read. Um, because once you apply to college, on the Common App, you will provide an email address, and that is when those colleges start communicating directly with you regarding your application. Many schools track um, if an email has been opened. So again, you need to have your email organized. One of the things that we recommend is after you applied to create in your email, create a folder for each individual college. As you receive an email from that college, you put it in the folder. And then once a week, you go through those folders and make note of any requirements or deadlines or anything that you need to do. Kind of like how we've recommended that you have a weekly college counseling meeting or college conversation with your parents. Um, we recommend that you tackle those, those emails from colleges once a week. Otherwise, college, the college application process bleeds into everything. So find a system, think about that system over the summer, create a new email address if you need to, because being on top of email is really, really important. So without further ado, we're going to get into the Common App. We're going to show you that platform, give you a general overview of what it looks like, and then we will give you an opportunity to ask questions. The Q&A um, feature is active. So as you're thinking of something, you can go ahead and type that in there, and then I will ask, answer those questions at the end. So now I'm going to share my screen. This is always a little 
sure, Keith, it's going to work, but I think it's going to. We've been practicing. And there it is. Okay, so this is the Common App. Um, the website is commonapp.org. And basically, this is the section over here on the right side that you are most concerned with. If you need to create an account, which you do, most of you do, you will click on the black create an account button and it's going to ask you who you are. You are all first year students. Nobody on this webinar is a transfer student, so we're not going to worry about that. You're also not an educational professional. Professional, that's me or Mrs. Button. Parents, this is kind of a new feature, can also create a Common App account. So essentially, you will see everything your child sees in your own version of the application that can't be submitted to colleges. So it's a practice, it's a dummy account. So if you want to go through the Common App, again, even though you've already applied to college maybe like 30 years ago, um, you can create a dummy Common App account and look at the same information your student is looking at. But for students, you're gonna create, click that first year student button I'm going to ask you for an email address. Again, this is the email address that you are on top of. If you are not on top of the email address that you currently have, then now is the time to create a new one. It can be, um, it can be the Wyoming City Schools email address, but we don't really recommend that because of the, um, the filters, the firewall. Sometimes things don't get through that firewall. So this should be a personal email address that is professional, um, you sound like a serious, a serious applicant. Your password, retyping the password, that whole deal. And it's gonna ask you your name, um, date of birth, if you are a member of the European Union, we are not, so that's gonna be a no. And then this last question is, when are you planning to apply? So all of you are going to click this second option, planning to start college in 2023. Again, the reason why the, the applying as a first year student and plan to start in 21 or 22 is even an option is because this is, this is last year's Common App. This is not your Common App. So if you create an account now, you're gonna click this planning to start college in 2023. Even if you are considering a gap year and you're not 100% sure you're even going to go to college in 2023, you are gonna go ahead and select that option. So once you do that, you, you agree that the Common App is gonna share information with colleges, they're gonna communicate with you, and by checking this box, you indicate that you are over the age of 18 or that your parents know that you've done it. So that, that creates the account. I already have a Common App account, obviously, so I am going to sign in. Again, I'm a first year student. And let me type in my email address. I don't really have a Hotmail account. This is just my fake. I'm an app account. I always get a little embarrassed when I type in that Hotmail address because it's very like early 2000s. Um, okay, so my fake student's name is Ryan. Um, when you log in, you have these five tabs across the top of the screen. The first tab that I want to draw your attention to is financial aid resources. This is really, really important because this is how, this is information about applying for federal financial aid. It's not really, really important right now. So we are going to basically ignore this section of the Common App. This is helpful information when you are ready to complete the FAFSA, which can happen on August 1st, or excuse me, October 1st, 2022. Again, it says 2021 because this is last year's Common App. So the earliest, date a family can submit the FAFSA is October 1st. We will have a financial aid information session in September that will we'll kind of go over the ins and outs of the FAFSA. 
So we're not going to do anything with this right now, but just know that this financial aid resources tab is available to you. The Common App tab is kind of the nuts and bolts of the college application. So this is the mysterious college application that we all hear about. It is divided into seven sections, one, two, seven sections. Profile is basic information about you. Family is your parents' names, their address, employers. Education is information about Wyoming High School. Or if you've taken College Credit Plus courses, it will be asked, you will be asked about that here. Testing is information about standardized testing. Activities are the things you do when you're not in school. The writing is the personal statement, that 650 word essay that you need to write for the common application. And then courses and grades is only for certain schools. So some colleges, colleges and universities, instead of Wyoming High School sending a transcript on your behalf, they want you to self-report your grades and the courses you've taken. Um, it's, this is mostly a large state university um, thing. So Purdue asks you to report courses and grades. Um, I think the University of South Carolina, Clemson. So not every student will utilize this courses and grades section because it's dependent on um, whether or not a school requires it. In your report card, which is gonna be sent home later on this week, you are going to receive a copy of your transcript. So it is going to show your grades and the courses you've taken through your junior year. The only thing it will not show are your senior year courses that you've signed up for because those we don't print those until later on in the summertime. But these are the sections. And when you have completed a section, answered all the required questions, you get a green check mark. You can move freely from one section to the next. You can hop around. You don't need to work, um, work on these sections in order. And your work is saved each time you, you work on a section and log out. So it's something that you can you know, definitely start on. But I cannot emphasize this enough. The Common App is going to change. It is going to be released again for real on August 1st. So we are hesitant to have students get too deep into it at, because things might change, but you can at least familiarize yourself with, you know, with what you're being asked to do. And you can begin to get your ducks in a row in terms of the information that you will need. The activity section is basically taking a resume or an activities list and translating it to this section of the common application. So the common app section or the common app tab is kind of the, the heart and soul of the application process. In addition to the main section of the common app that goes to all of the schools you are planning to apply to, each college also has specific questions that are just for them. And how you navigate to that section of the Common App, before you can navigate to that section of the Common App, you need to populate your Common App with the schools that you're applying to. To do that, you use the College Search tab. So if I would like to apply to Creighton University, I type in Creighton. It is going to pop right on up. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click add to my colleges. So then Creighton is going to show up on my personalized common application. I will show you where that is. The fantastic, fantastic thing about this main tab is that it can take you directly to the school's website. You can take a virtual tour. It has the deadlines for that institution all in one place. It has um, fees if there's an application fee. 
standardized testing policies, letters of recommendation. So one of the things we've talked about in junior family meetings, if you had one of those, is teacher letters of recommendation. And we've encouraged all juniors to ask at least one teacher to write a letter of recommendation, to have that ready to go. If you apply to Creighton, you do not need a letter of recommendation for your application to be considered complete, but they do give you the option to send two letters of recommendation. Whether or not it makes sense to send a letter or to send two letters is you know, something that you would talk about with either me or Mrs. Button. But this page gives you, um, gives you all the information you need to start to think about that decision. So this is Creighton. Let's say I would like to add another school. I would like to add Georgetown. I'm also applying to Georgetown. So I'm typing in Georgetown University in Washington, DC, and it's not popping up. That is because Georgetown does not accept the common application. Georgetown is one of a handful of schools that has their own application on their website. So if you are typing in the name of a school, one of your schools, and it is not here, then that means for that school, you will go to their website, you will create an account, and you will complete the application on their website. It is basically going to be the same content, the same information, um, but for whatever reason, there are certain schools that don't want to be essentially bossed around by the Common App. They want to do their own thing entirely. So that's what that means if you're typing in a school and it doesn't, it doesn't appear. So just for fun, let's type in another school so I can show you what it looks like. Ohio State University. So I click on that. I click add it to my colleges. Again, information about the university, deadlines, fees, testing, letters of recommendation, all of the things. So if you do nothing else this summer, um, you can at least get a handle on what your schools require in terms of letters of recommendation, application fees, deadlines, and plan accordingly. So now I've added some schools into the common application. I click on dashboard and it shows them at a glance. It shows basically that I've added the school and that the application is in progress. I haven't really done anything, um, but it's in the common app system. Let's say I change my mind and I no longer want to apply to Ohio State. I just hit remove that school. So we really want the common application to be clean, for lack of a better word. We want it to mirror exactly what is happening. So if you are highly enthusiastic about the college application process and you add 15 schools to the common application, and then you're like, wait a minute, that's ridiculous. Remove those schools. We want, we want the common app to reflect exactly where you end up applying. My colleges tab is where you complete the college specific sections. So again, the Common App tab, everything that you answer here is going to all of the schools. So this writing prompt is specific to you, but you are not mentioning any school. You are not talking about wanting to go to the University of Denver because that essay is going to all of the other schools in addition to the University of Denver. The My Colleges section is where you are specifically answering questions for that school. Um, this questions section is sometimes where you'll be asked, why do you want to apply here? Or what was your most favorite thing about our school? It, it could be a variety of things. It could be very detailed. It can also just be very simple. You know, when do you, when do you, what do you want to study? So it's here under the school specific questions that things kind of go a little bit, um, a little bit haywire because each college has their own 
specific requirements in terms of this these questions here. Recommendations in FERPA is where you invite me or Mrs. Button or your teachers or an optional letter of recommendation to submit a letter of recommendation on your behalf. The letter of recommendation process is entirely electronic. You've already had, hopefully, the in-person conversation with a teacher. The recommendations in FERPA section is where you add their name and email address, um, or excuse me, you add their name, um, and then they will upload that letter of recommendation either to the Common App or SCORE, which I will talk about in a moment. Review and submit. When you click the review and submit button, you can only review and submit if you have green check marks here, green check marks for all of your here. You click review and submit. It pulls up a PDF of the application. So you can see exactly what the colleges will see. This is where you pay the application fee. And by hitting submit, you are actually sending that application to the college. You are doing this one by one. So you would want to work on this, get green check marks here before you turn your attention here. Sometimes students jump around, like they'll, they'll work on Creighton and OSU and Loyola Chicago, kind of like all at the same time. I would find that highly confusing. So I think for most students, it makes sense to, to work on an application, get that application done in, in its entirety, hit review and submit, and then turn your attention to the next, the next application. Most of you are going to have a November 1 deadline. Um, November 1 is, in many cases, the merit scholarship deadline. So, um, so plan accordingly. You know, kind of what we've been saying in our junior meetings is the ideal scenario is that you spend your summer kind of getting your ducks in a row in terms of knowing your school's deadlines, knowing requirements in, ter in terms of letters of recommendation, getting a resume together, so that when you go to actually fill out the acti activity section of the common application, everything is ready to go um, and working on your essay. You know, I've sent the common app essay prompts to, to juniors multiple times via Canvas. So everybody knows those essay prompts. If you've overlooked that email, you can Google common app essay prompts and it's gonna, it's gonna pop, pop those up for you. So we would like for you to start working on your essay. Um, most students, most students, it, it takes a long time to get an essay that they feel um, best reflects their, um, who they are. And so we, while we want students to start thinking about it and writing it over the summer, sometimes the final essay, the one that is ultimately sent, is not written until early early um, of the senior year or even you know September of the senior year, which is which is perfectly appropriate and fine. Um, we don't want the essay to feel rushed. We don't want students in an effort just to get it done to write an essay that does not reflect who they are. So taking your time with the essay is really, really important. But November 1st, in most instances, is D-Day. So you need to have everything ready to go two weeks prior to that. So if November 1st is the application deadline, we would like you to um, be in a position to hit submit by October 15th. The Common App is how you apply to college. This is the application for admission. SCORE, you've heard us you talk about SCORE, SCORE is um, how students request transcripts. It is how they sign up for college rep visits. And I'm not gonna get into SCORE because um, you don't need to know how to request a transcript right now. Mrs. Bunn and I are not sending transcripts um, until really early September because um, as much as we don't want students to change their schedules, students change their schedules. If a student is in a CCP course, 
Sometimes it's on their transcript and then they drop the CCP course. So we start sending transcripts really right around early to mid-September. So you don't need to know how to request that transcript until that time, but it's really, really easy to do. And we will make sure students understand how to, um, how to do that. So you can, we encourage you to create an account. We encourage you to explore the common application, get a handle on what you need. I am reluctant to encourage you to start actually filling it out because this is not your common app. This is last year's common app. And if there are significant changes, that can be unsettling. Um, sometimes in the rolling over process, things get lost. So I don't want you to spend a ton of time on this because it's not, it's not the real application. So this is just a brief overview. So you, you, we can kind of pull that curtain back and you can see ultimately what you will be doing. Um, Mrs. Button and I will check in with every senior early in the senior year, um, August and September, to touch base on the status of their applications, you know, kind of go over some, um, you know, some details. We will send a weekly email out to seniors, letting them know this is what's coming up. This is what you should be working on right now. And it's shocking to me how many students, like using this year's, the recent graduates as an example, are like, yeah, I just didn't read that. Um, and I try, not to, I try not to let that hurt my feelings. We know you're busy. We know you have a lot of things going on. Um, but if you are taking the time to fill out a college application, I certainly hope you can take the time to read the five minute email I'm sending you because it's really, really helpful information that will alleviate a lot of the concerns and the stresses that families experience regarding the college application process. We are so fortunate at Wyoming High School to have two college counselors. Um, Mrs. Button and I are not hold, you know, doing other things in most cases. And so we really, really want to be a resource for you. And so we want you to feel comfortable reaching out to us should, should things come up. But we will have a couple programs early in the fall that will go into greater detail about the application process. We will offer some help sessions during flex time so students can you know, work on their college applications during school. So we really feel like you know, the tools are in place for this to be a really, really successful process. Obviously, we cannot guarantee that you're gonna get into all of your schools or your first choice school. But over the years, our students have been very successful. And even if they don't get into their first choice school, 99.9% .9 of our students are really, really happy with the outcome of the process. It's really important for me to emphasize that it is a, it's a process and seniors who just graduated, so I, sh I shouldn't say seniors, you guys are the seniors, um, recent graduates a year ago, if you would have asked them if they felt confident that they would end up at a school that they were happy at or that they would navigate the process, process successfully, I'm sure the vast majority of them were unsure about that because you just, you know, you, you just have to go through it. And so trust the process, know that it's all going to work out um, and that you're gonna have great choices at the end of the year. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I want to, I want, to, I want you to give me, I want to give you an opportunity to ask me questions. Um, right now they're, oh, when will the new year of the applications be updated on Common App? So August 1st, August 1st is when the new 20, 23-24, um, for the school year 23-24 will be, will be ready to go. So August 1st is kind of that magical day, which is why application boot camp is scheduled for after August 1st. Other questions I can answer for you. I don't, I don't, I guess it's a, I guess it's good that there are not too many questions or no questions with a webinar me not being able to see you 
I can never tell. We can't tell if everybody's like during the headlights overwhelmed or feel so confident um, about this process. So can you tell us three things the kids can work on over the summer? Yeah, those three things would be working on that essay. Um, the Common App prompts are available to you. So begin to think about the, the prompt that makes the most sense for you. There are six specific questions. And then the seventh choice is a personal statement, which is essentially tell us, tell us anything you want to know. Um, so begin to think about that and write it so that when you come back to school in August, you have at least the framework of an application together. Secondly, get your ducks in a row. Ideally, have a fairly firm list on where you're applying and knowing the requirements for those applications. If, that, if there's a movement on that list, you know, you decide not to apply to a school or a school comes on your radar really, really late or later in the process, that's totally fine. I mean, you're 17 years old, you're 18 years old, you're, you're just really starting to think about what the next four years are going to look like. Um, so getting your ducks in a row as, as much as you possibly can. And then I'm actually going to give you four things. The third thing would be to create a resume or a list of activities um, so that when you go to fill out that activity section of the common application, everything is right there for you. And the fourth thing would be get a handle on your email, clean up your email, figure out a system for, 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 for handling that email. Because again, that's how colleges communicate with you. That's whether they're gonna let you know of a scholarship deadline or if an item is missing on your application. So spend some time thinking about what you're going to do when you start to get multiple emails from multiple colleges. I mean, you guys already know this. You're already getting tons of emails from colleges and the vast majority of them you probably don't even read or open, which is fine as a prospective applicant. But when you are a actual applicant, you need to stay on top of that. So those are those four things. Um, Parent letters of recommendation. Yes. So Mrs. Button and I write a counselor letter of recommendation for our seniors. You're kind of the official endorsement from a school, from, from Wyoming High School. We are tasked with making sure college admission officers understand that Wyoming is a very rich, rigorous academic environment and that students who've navigated Wyoming High School successfully are prepared for college. Um, obviously, those letters of recommendation need to be more detailed than that. So we rely on two pieces of information from students. One is called the senior questionnaire, which is basically what it sounds like. It is a document that basically asks you to tell us about yourself. Um, and the second is that parent letter of recommendation. Both the senior questionnaire and the parent letter of recommendation are due October 1st. We will send out some additional guidance regarding those parent letters of recommendation. So you kind of get a handle on um, what we are looking for. But essentially anything you can tell us about your child is helpful to us. Nobody knows your student better than you do. We know what kind of student they are. We know what they're involved in. But as far as kind of those personal qualities, that's where that parent letter of recommendation becomes really helpful. Um, okay, so how should we handle any questions that come up about the Common App as we are familiarizing ourselves with it over the summer? So as you're, as you're looking at the Common App and you're like, I don't, I don't know what they're asking here, um, I would go ahead and make a note to yourself, like jot it down. So then we have our senior check-in meeting in early, mid-August, early September, we can answer those questions um, at that time. Even if, you, even if you spend every day looking at the Common App, and even if you come to application boot camp and you've had a junior meeting, there are always going to be questions that come up because you've never done this before. So that's, um, you know, that's the benefit of college counselors being available to you. You can email us at any time. You can sign up for a meeting. Um, we will, again, have help sessions throughout the school day next year during FlexBell. So there, there's lots of time, lots of opportunities for you to get those questions answered. 
what is involved in application bootcamp? So application bootcamp is essentially working on the common application with Mrs. Button and I right there. We limit the number of students who can sign up. Everybody who signed up for the debt by the deadline of May 25th has a spot in bootcamp. Um, but if you didn't sign up for bootcamp and you're like, oh my God, I wish I would have signed up for bootcamp, don't sweat it. We have so many other opportunities throughout the school year to, to give students the guidance that they need. When is a good time to start applying for scholarships? Um, so the scholarship process kind of dovetails with the college application process. It seems like when the application process starts to wind down at the end of October, early November, the, the um, scholarship search process starts to pick up speed. In many cases, the application for admission is the application for scholarships at that institution, which is why that November 1 deadline is significant because that is the scholarship deadline. So those are the scholarships that come from the schools themselves. Third party scholarships are scholarships that are not affiliated with a particular college. They follow you wherever you go. Um, those are scholarships that students actually have to look for because they're not tied to one particular college. We have several resources on Canvas, um, several search, search engines on Canvas, um, several opportunities for students to create a profile so that students can um, start to receive links for scholarships that meet their profile. So if students have some time on their hands this summer, beginning to look at that scholarship, those scholarships through those resources on Canvas is another thing that, um, that students can do. But the deadlines for most major third-party scholarships are a little bit later on in in the fall and throughout the winter? These are great questions. Um, any other questions I can answer for you before we sign off and let you have a little bit of a Tuesday evening left? All right, I think, give it just like two more seconds to see if any other questions pop up. Um, we hope this has been helpful. Students know how to navigate SCORE. Parents have the opportunity to create an account on SCORE as well. I've sent out a link, or Mr. Stallings has sent out the inv invite multiple times through his weekly email. I will go ahead and send that out again. By, by parents creating an account on SCORE, you will have access to the same information your students have. And it will also give you the opportunity to be copied on the weekly emails that we will start sending out um, next fall. But we are very much looking forward to working with you. Our junior meetings have been great. So this is going to be a great class. And we are, you know, we're excited about it. It's going to be a great year. In the meantime, enjoy your summer. Um, think about your essays, get that activities list together, your resume together, but most importantly, um, take, take the summer as an opportunity to recharge, work, sleep in, read, um, do all of the things that make you happy, and we will see you in August. Take care.